card mat. Now this is a trick that, that should really be done on two people and it's basically two people are who are rather emotionally involved supposedly and this is to see exactly how close they are. So to do it we need the first spectator to select the card. So anytime they like they can tell me to stop. Anytime they like and they won't stop. Okay. So what have they gone and got? They've got the Jack of Hearts. Now if we take the Jack of Hearts and just stick that somewhere into the middle of that packet. Like that, so you can see. Now, do the spectator need the card? So again, they can tell me to stop whenever they like. Anytime you like, they tell me to stop. And the same, stop. Okay, so what have they got? They've got a ten of spades. So you've got a jack of hearts, and we've got a ten of spades. Now if we take the ten of spades and put that in the middle of this packet, and then put this packet on the top of that packet, you can see that they are somewhere apart. If I push the first one in, and push the second one in, and give the pack a magic little riffle. When I spread through, we should find that one of the cards has turned up, face up even. Now if we take that card, and take the kissing card, which is basically the card which is right on top of it, kissing it, as you can see, kissing, very romantic, we should find that that card is actually due to spectator's card. So we've got both spectator's cards here. And a good thing about this is, if we just square them up, and we get spectator one to bring his hand in, and we put the two cards on there, and get spectator two to bring his hand in, and put it on the top, this shows how romantically involved they actually are. Just give it a second, and then when they take the hands off, we find that the two cards have actually melted into one card. Just the one card with both of their cards on. So in this case, they are very, very, very romantically involved. Somebody book a church. I'll have an invite. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you want to see how it's done, well, tutorial's next, isn't it? I hope you enjoyed that. Nice little effect. Uh, I call it the anniversary waltz. Some people do. A lot of other people call it the Valentine's trick. Anything as long as it's romantically involved, you can call it the wedding trick. Do it at a wedding. Engagement trick. But you get the idea. All you need for it is a double-faced card and a double-back card and a pack of cards. Right? Good idea to take out whatever card you've got in there at the start so you've got no duplicates in. It is a good idea. Because when you first start doing it, uh, when you first go to it, you're going to be doing the Hindu force. So if to uh, do a proper shuffle first so that you can show them the bottom of the card. Uh, the bottom card all the time is changing into a different card. That's why you don't want really want to have them two in just in case you get to one. You set up. Oh, nice, nice. We'll separate them in two aces. Put your double back, take two cards off, put your double backer on the bottom, put two in different cards on the top, and put your double facer on top of that. Now, I say you start off, you just do the a shuffle like that, just to show that the cards are changing every time. Say to spectator one, to tell you to stop whenever. And then you do your Hindu force, where you're taking a few, two or three cards at a time, off the top of the packet, keeping that card on the bottom all the time, but not showing them it. And you get them to tell you to stop whenever they like. I say they say stop now. You put that packet onto the table, and you turn this over and grip it in your other hand. Then you do a double, well, you get them to sign it. You sign their name across the front of that. Then you do a double lift, turn it facing down. Then you do another, then you're picking this top card up, but you don't want to flash that card, because that's going to be the next chosen card. So as you're taking that, you do a wrist kill. But there's a good reason for doing the wrist kill. As you're doing the wrist kill, you're moving your hand over to split that packet. To put that in, to put that on. There's your excuse for doing the wrist kill. And you leave that card just sticking out in the middle of that packet. 
Then you do the exact same force for the other person. You've got the 10 on the bottom. You're just taking a couple of cards off the top each time you go, keeping the 10 on the bottom, and they say stop. Turn it over to show them that they've got the 10. Turn that packet over and put them at the bottom of the pile. Now you need to do another double lift, but you got to you double back of there and you don't want to show it. So you're doing a double lift and the wrist kill at the same time. So you grab the two cards, you turn your hand over, put the 10 back, then turn it over again, showing that you put it on. Now you need to take that card off, which isn't your 10, because your 10 is on the back of that jack. Oh, sorry, you get them to sign the 10. Yeah, so you just, yeah. So you just force the 10 on them, you put them to the bottom, you get them to sign the 10. And take the two cards off together, give it a little shake if you want to, to you know, you're drying the ink. Put it to the bottom and turn it over, then wrist kill again. And your reason for wrist killing now, because you don't want to show that jack, is you wrist kill it, and then you just riffle the corner with your thumb. So it looks pretty natural again. So you can slide that card in and put that on the top. And they can see the two cards are miles apart. Push them in together. Do whatever you want to do. Spread the cards out. I knew that had happened. And again, it's happened. You spread the cards out and you'll find one of the cards is turned face up. Now you say you'll take the kissing card, which is the card right above it, because they would be face to face, wouldn't they? kissing cards. So you cut at that card and bring them to the top. Peel off the top two cards and go so let's see if the 10 actually found your card and as you turn over all you're going to do is just push that card across with your thumb in the motion of turning over. So it looks more realistic that the card is actually in the right place. And when you're putting them down make sure you've got them that way so that you double back it as nearest to the packet. Grip them with your thumb. Adjust your, your grip. And say I'll just square them up. And you drop the double backer onto the pack. I'll just square them up. Put the pack down. And say spectator one give us your hand. And you just put the card into their hand. Spectator two puts theirs on the top. You give it a couple of seconds. Get them to squeeze really hard. When you take it away you find that there's only the one card. And when they look on the other side of it. You see that it's the other card and the signatures are on both cards, which is really impressive. And you can give them the card then, can you? It's a little keepsake of your nice little bit of magic. And the double backer ends up on the top of the packet. So again, if you needed to, you could just palm it away, get rid of the card and do a normal trick. Well, I hope you followed that. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching that. And I'll see you again soon.